sure we have their food, uh, make sure we have a place for them to stay because they're going to be separate. They're not going to be with the families within the shelter themselves. They're going to be put in another safe area. Uh, just because within the shelter itself, you might have people who might have allergies uh, to pests. So we want to keep them safe, uh, but be prepared to take care of them. Uh, be prepared to go take a look on them every now and then, but be prepared with them just like you would any other member of the family. Yeah. And in years past, it used to be only certain ones were pet friendly, but right. now pretty much, and, and, and they knew that that was keeping people from going yes. and getting out of harm's way. Yes, so. and we understand that, like you said, uh, pets are a very, very important part. And sure. so we want to make sure that we're accommodating them yeah. as well. Um, as far as COVID's changed a lot of things in our lives, right. I can imagine in a evacuation center, <laughs> it's you know how do you how do you how do you balance that? Yeah, one of the things that we've had to do uh, over the last year is kind of provide more spacing between groups. In other words, you come in with the family, you're kind of be generally located with your family, but you'll be a little bit more distance separated from other families. Uh, the difference is a lot of times now there's not a lot of mingling. In other words, you don't see people walking around talking to each other. And they kind of stay within their groups uh, just to maintain that social distancing, just to make sure that everybody's safe, uh, staying healthy, uh, but they're out of harm's way. But again, it's a little bit more limited in terms of the actual social interaction. Lots of options for shelters here in Northport. How do, how do people know where to go? Uh, basically, what we will do is we will let you know what shelters are open. And as you stated before, we have several options. However, uh, when a storm comes along, that doesn't necessarily mean that all the shelters are open. Uh, we will let our residents know what shelters are open, when they are going to open, and when they can report to those shelters. So pay very, very close attention to the shelters. That Good are evening. Open. Today is Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022. It is 6 p.m. We are in the city chambers, and I call the city commission regular meeting to order. Commissioners present are Commissioner McDowell, Commissioner White, Mayor Emmerich, Vice Mayor Langdon, and Commissioner Luke. There is a quorum present for this meeting. Also present, City Manager Fletcher, City Attorney Slayton, City Clerk Taylor, Assistant City Clerk Gianelli, Police Chief Garrison, and Fire Chief Titus. Also in the room, we have County Commissioner Ron Cutsinger, who will be giving us a brief update later on in this program. So I call on Ms. Gianelli to lead us in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, ma'am. Be looking for a motion for approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. I have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Luke to approve the agenda as presented, and that was seconded by uh, Vice Mayor Langdon. Anything to that, ladies? No, sir. No, sir. Please vote. And that passes five to zero. City Clerk, is there any online public comment? All righty, I know we have some in-house public comment. Uh, Mr. Valdi Olander, please. Uh, good evening. <laughs> I am Valdi Olander. I live in Northport geographical area. And uh, I don't work for the corporation city of Northport, nor I am any contract with. As I stated before, uh, piece of a organization chart, Mr. Manager, Mr. Uh, Ms. Uh, Attorney, and the clerks. I've been saying this for a long time. I come here in peace, clean hands, Spirit of liberty, good hand. I am not a criminal. Would you remove the policeman behind me? No, sir. I am not a criminal. You know very well the charter prohibit policemen standing behind the people. I hear also testify to the fact that uh, what is written in the charter and the oaths what you took is not made in the uh, in the life over here. 
in the practice. I am your boss. I'm paying you salary, like the many, many other people. And you disrespect me. How much time I have left? Can I speak more than three minutes? Yes, that's the question I asked many times. Uh, Mayor, first time I met you was on the stairs, which connects those two floors, bottom and this one. And uh, you were running first time. I didn't know you at all. So I asked you, Pete, why are you running? You told me that um, if I be elected, I'll be fighting for you. I was, oh, gee, you know, he was fighting. But why you have to fight for me? So now, why are you fighting me? You're supposed to fight for me. What change, Mayor? The promises, and when you got in the office, got the $95,000, you totally change? Another thing, there is discriminatory practice between the people who speak here, and you're given only three minutes, and the city employee who speak uh, without any uh, time limits. They are precluded from speaking here. And I also ask, why is the entourage from city employees sitting over here? It is the public meeting, or this is the corporate meeting? Is the public belongs to the public? When you're going to listen to the, our side, are we only good to take our money? Recently, a uh, city manager says that uh, there was in the library a couple of days ago. He says that rising home prices are very good. Really? My kids and many, many other kids cannot afford the houses. This is not the way of thinking. Rising home prices give more money to the commissioners, to the city employees. You, sir. I want to speak more. That's your three minutes. Thank you, sir. Well, you never answer me. Why, why only three minutes? City Manager, can we have staff get with Mr. Olander and explain the process to him? Yes, sir. Thank no you, problem. sir. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Scott. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I did not attend this morning's workshop, but I have some concerns regarding the state of our city. Does the city of Northport focus on solving the city's greatest challenges, or are they simply spending time at workshop on less important matters? Does the city of Northport listen to their diverse and dynamic citizenry, or do they deny their concerns even exist? Does the city of Northport achieve their goals and benchmarks for the city and its residents, or are they leading from behind on both fronts? And finally, when resident concerns are brought forward to the city of Northport, have they been addressed in a reliable and responsible manner by city staff? These questions are just the tip of the iceberg in addressing the many challenges that face our city during these turbulent times. Simply put, our city commission hires a city manager whom they seem to be relying upon to bring credibility back to our city. That's the good news. But what lies ahead for our city is at times uncertain. And that will be the real challenge moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Bonsky. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Yeah, you did. Okay. Okay. <laughs> My name is Nick Bonsky. I'm a longtime resident in Northport. 32 years I've been here. I've been a licensed contractor for probably 25 years, 28 years of that. Uh, so I've been here for a while. Uh, I've been through the tree codes and, and such, and that's what I want to talk to you about is the implementation of your new tree ordinance. Uh, without getting into the wisdom or effectiveness of the actual ordinance, it's the timing of the implementation. As contractors, myself, I'm here on behalf of a number of us from the Contract Association in Charlotte, Minnesota, as well as Sarasota, Manatee, and uh, some civil engineers. We all found out about this particular new ordinance about eight days ago, seven days ago. 
Despite what staff says about shareholder participation over the last three years in it, the fact is no one in the industry that we could find was involved or aware that it was coming until a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. The email that they sent out to all of us to come learn how we were to implement this and collect the fund funds uh, was typically the email that staff used to reach out to us and say, hey, we're having this workshop, we're having a committee, we're rewriting the ULDC, come participate, you guys want to give some you know, insight. Never happened this time. Um, so we're caught off guard. And unfortunately, that's caused some serious ramifications that perhaps you guys hadn't considered with the 45-day implementation from passing. And that is, for example, I have contracts with young first-time home buyers. I now have to go back to them and say, I didn't know about this. It's not in your contract, but here's a new ordinance you're going to have to pay for. And it's going to be, I did the tree survey, did the little formula, $4,800 with some credits will come down to about $4,300. They don't have the money. Their loan's already closed. They've got to come up with it themselves to pay you folks. I've given, I'm going to give them your emails, let them come talk to you about it. But I, there's this, I'm just one little tiny example. But this is ha going to happen all over. We need time to acclimate, train our, our people, adjust our contracts to include this kind of stuff, the verbiage that's necessary. And it takes us four months minimum to get from signed contract to permit submittal for you folks. And we don't have time to do that by April 8th. So all these folks are all going to get hit with an unexpected just some common courtesy, you know, based on what you've done in the past, this is very unusual to do it 45 days. Usually it's six months, four months at the minimum for something that's such huge financial impact. I just did one lot with three hair industries on it. He's going to be over $14,000. Thank heavens he's got, he can afford it, I think, but boy, is he upset. <laughs> He's like, well, why didn't you tell me about this before, Nick? I'm like, I didn't know. It's really, I'm tired of having those conversations already. I've only had two. Um, I don't know what to do, folks, but I would ask you to please consider implementation delay of at least another three months, four months. Give us time to work through the contracts we have, adjust our contract language, train our the survey companies. We have to not only train the survey companies, but the civil engineers now to learn about what they have to do to comply. Um, my clearing guys have to learn. It's not something that we can do in two weeks and comply. It's going to, and we're going to overwhelm staff with problems. It's just going to. All right. Thank not, you, sir. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for your time. Before, before you move away from the podium, what I am going to ask you personally is if you could reach out to me to where you and I can sit down and have a meeting in my office to where we can go over this. I'll move my stick uh, right time tomorrow. You want to meet. You just tell me what time. I'll be there. Okay. And city manager, can uh, we get staff to. Go ahead and look through this and yeah, we, are we are, Mr. Mayor. We're already looking at it. It's been brought to our attention. We do know there are challenges on implementation. We know there's challenges on timing. We know there's challenges on, on cost. So we're trying to see how now we can best remediate that for the greater good of everyone, including yourself, who has brought this issue up in front of us. Yes. Commissioner McDowell. Yes, if I could, Mayor. Um, City Manager, could you please get Mr. Bonsky's contact information so I can call him tomorrow? Please. I'll, I'll make sure you get it before I leave, sir. I'm sorry? I'll, I'll get you my contact information Thank directly. You. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I've got it. Oh, Commissioner Luke. I thought uh, the, the projects that had the permit pulled, that that didn't affect them. And so I'm wondering. That, that's know. why I want it looked into a little bit further so we have that understanding. That's the understanding that's that the I That's the understanding thought. I had yes. when we put it in, that the ones who had the permits pulled are not affected by this. It, it would be new permits going in. That's, that's what that we're looking we, into. And right. Unfortunately, it's not on the agenda to discuss tonight. That's why I want the city manager to work on that. And you can reply to all of us, you know, via yeah, email. It, it needs to be all of us because it was a decision that this full board made. And that 45 days was a compromise because staff had actually asked for a longer period of time. But we don't have another meeting for a full discussion before right. the 8th when, the, when it's implemented. So, well, we can always call a special meeting if yeah, need be. Yeah, we probably would have meeting. to do yeah. that. We we can do that with once city manager gets with staff, gets all the parameters, let us know, and then we can go from there. Especially if those who already have permits pulled are exempt from this, that needs to be clear. Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. 
All right, that's all I had on public comment. Um, city clerk announcements. The current vacancies for the following boards and committees include the Art Advisory Board, Audit Committee, Charter Review Advisory Board, Citizen Tax Oversight Committee, Community Economic Development Advisory Board, Environmental Advisory Board, Historic and Cultural Advisory Board, Joint Management Advisory Board, Municipal Firefighters Pension Trust Fund Board of Trustees, chosen by majority of board members, Municipal Police Officers Pension Trust Fund Board of Trustees, elected by police officer members, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, Public Utility Advisory Board, Veterans Park Advisory Committee, and Zoning Board of Appeals. The upcoming expirations for the following advisory boards and committees, Citizens Tax Oversight Committee, Environmental Advisory Board, and Municipal Police Officer Pension Trust Fund Board of Trustees, Commission Appointed, one Northport resident to serve on the Sarasota Manatee Metropolitan Planning Organization Citizen Advisory Network. If anyone would like more information, please see the City Clerk's Office. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to consent agenda, city manager, has anything been pulled for discussion from the consent agenda? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, one item, uh, item A. Item uh, A, A, A as an apple, 2196. Okay, I'm ready to entertain a motion. I move to approve the consent agenda as um, presented, but pulling A for discussion. I have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Luke uh, to approve the consent agenda as presented, uh, moving item A out for discussion. Do I have a second? Second. Who seconded? Second. Okay. And that was seconded by Commissioner McDowell. Anything to that? No, Please vote. <laughs> And that passes five to zero. City manager, who pulled this item? Um, Commissioner Luke. Commissioner Luke, the floor is yours. Uh, the reason I pulled it was because I heard that there, this was more of a presentation, and I wanted to be able to have anyone from Northport forward or any anyone else to speak to this donation. Usually we have donations as a presentation or something, so I didn't want this do donation to be ignored without it being recognized. Mayor, if I may comment Absolutely. further on that. <clears throat> First, I want to thank Commissioner Luke for pulling that item. Um, and I have been in contact with the organization North Port Forward, and they would like to make a presentation and requested time on our April 7th regular meeting. Well, if City Clerk, how would you want that to be? I mean, just go ahead and approve this and then have a presentation uh, on that day. Yes. Okay. okay. We can do that. Then I'll make a motion to approve uh, consent <coughs> agenda item A as presented. Second. I have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Luke to approve consent agenda item A as presented, and that was seconded by Mayor. Vice Mayor uh, Langdon. Anything to that, ladies? No, no sir. sir. Please vote. Okay. And that passes five to zero. Okay, moving on to presentations. Um, we There's no public comment under the consent. Sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where can I find that to be true? It's on the agenda right here for the consent agenda all the way down to discussion, and there is absolutely no public comment. Now, if you pull that for discussion, can I for the commission discussion, yes. Pardon me? For the commissioner's discussion, yes. Well, then, I should be able to then I will ask the clerk. Because she is our technician over there on the rules and regulations. So, according to this, there is none. Is there public Typically comment? Typically, when the item is pulled yes. for discussion, we do public comment. Okay, then okay. thank you. Jeffrey Scott, you have public comment. The integrity of the Northport City Commission rests 
to a large extent on the ability to project an image of fairness without playing favorites to a local nonprofit. Let me remind all commissioners that transparency is a way to protect fairness and it will ensure the public good remains intact. When the concept of transparency is broken, it creates an environment of mistrust and suspicion that is unresponsive to the citizens who reside in the city of Northport. Favoritism, on the other hand, is often obscure. Although some Northport city commissioners are foolish enough to show their bias towards a city department or local nonprofit while on the dais. Needless to say, an 850 cash donation for exercise equipment seems out of the ordinary, especially when this equipment at retail can cost thousands of dollars. Without any relevant attachments like a gift contract between Northport Forward and the Northport Police Department, how is this consent, consent agenda not riddled with inquiry? I will assume the yearly police department budget does not fund exercise equipment, or does it? Whenever ambiguities exist that involve a gift donation without any attachment, a conflict of interest will likely occur. From my perspective, gift donations are okay, provided there is some kind of documentation to include a financial reporting of the gift. In my opinion, full disclosure regarding any and all consent agenda items should be the norm, not the exception. To summarize, transparency and accountability should be adhered to regarding all items that appear on tonight's meeting agenda. In my opinion, all items on a meeting agenda should have supporting documents, attachments available for further review when called for further discussion. For whatever reason, this consent agenda item 22-2196 does not have any highlighted attachments. The failure to not provide them can lead to mistrust and suspicion by well-informed residents such as myself. Has this consent agenda item been discussed and vetted by our city attorney and her support staff? Or is this now the template that will allow nonprofits to gift donate without any documented transparent paper trail? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to presentations. An update from Sarasota County Commissioner Ron Kutzinger. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioners. Appreciate the opportunity to be before you tonight and kind of give you a quick update of some of the things that are going on in the county. Appreciated participating in the Pledge of Allegiance, which we also do to open our meetings. Uh, this Tuesday, I've asked uh, former Ar Army Sergeant Eugene Tomaszewski, a Vietnam veteran from 1966 to 1968, and past commander of the Ukrainian American Veterans Post 40, recipient of the National Defense Service Medal and Good Conduct Medal, I've asked him to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I want to give a shout out to the amazing and wonderful Ukrainian community here in Northport and let them know we stand with them and our hearts and our prayers are certainly with them. And we thought it would be good to demonstrate that uh, Tuesday as we welcome him to lead us in the pledge. I think last time I was here, I kind of gave uh, Mr. Emmerich a little hard time. I hadn't gotten one-on-one -on -one with him. We rectified that, and uh, Jerome and uh, our county administrator came down and met with, uh, excuse me, with Jerome and uh, Pete, and we had a, a great meeting, appreciated uh, that collaboration and that time together. So we've done that. <laughs> um, this morning, had the great experience of being at the groundbreaking for our new advanced wastewater treatment plant at the Bee Ridge location. It is the largest project ever undertaken by Sarasota County in its history. Overall, it'll be a $500 million uh, project. We are upgrading our plants to advanced wastewater treatment upon completion the facility will expand from 12 million gallons a day to 18 million gallons per day, and it will provide a sustainable water supply for irrigation and increase the county's ability, the county's ability to implement other water reuse options in the future. The project by implementing innovative wastewater treatment processes improves water quality by reducing nitrogen and phosphorus discharged into local water bodies. It will reduce nitrogen loads into the bay, which will help the Sarasota Bay Estuary Program towards their goal of reducing nitrogen loads by 20%. It also increases Sarasota County ability to implement groundwater discharge for projects in the future. It saved 
the county $22 million in financing by receiving a $105 million with the loan at, get this, 1.82%. Mm -hmm. I asked them if they could refinance my mortgage, but they didn't go along with that. <laughs> so it's a win-win. And along with the improvements, we will also be hardening the facilities to withstand hurricane force winds. And it will result in one of the best treatment facilities in the state, second only to Disney. But we're very excited about that. We have also moved forward on design for our remaining two plants. And as I mentioned, this is a $500 million project, and this is important to us all. I think it was appropriate. Most of us probably don't realize this, but today is World Water Day. I thought it was appropriate. We had a groundbreaking on that day. I'll give you a quick update on Legacy Trail. Uh, we recently cut the ribbon for the uh, segment that goes down to Payne Park in Sarasota. The Northport uh, connector is well under construction, weather permitting. Uh, we'll finish by uh, summer, if we earlier rather than later, if we don't get a lot of rains, and that redevelopment will move down to warm Renville Springs. We're also, as you know, the other trails uh, have been greatly improved. We went ahead and moved with all three trails and getting those, getting the Powerline Trail and the Deer Prairie Creek Trail upgraded. I think we know, and I think it's worth repeating that um, we had committed to it spending at least $2 million on the Northport connector. We've spent $7 million so far. In addition to that, uh, we're doing some other projects that I think are going to go along well with the uh, trail improvements. The Deer Curry Creek project, just read really the little thing that's going on there. I think this is pretty exciting. We're getting that bridge built two years ahead of schedule as a part of the project. But we are also upgrading ADA pedestrian access to load and unload kayaks, upgrading the uh, fishing pier, upgrading the parking at uh, the kayak launch there, adding some native landscaping and stormwater management improvements there at the Deer Curry Creek access point. So I'm not sure most people were aware of that. We got a nice grant from WCIND to help us with that, and that's underway as we speak. On May 4th, we will be having a ribbon cutting for the, South, the new South County Courthouse uh, behind R.L. Anderson. This is going to be great for South County, four new courthouses. It's a beautiful facility. I've had a tour of it here recently. And then we will move forward with the complete renovation of the existing R.L. Anderson building. Those improvements, again, will help service the entire South County. So I think that's good news for all of us. And I would certainly invite you to get May 4th down on your calendar and join us for that very important ribbon cutting. Another project that uh, we've all been focused on for a long time is a little project called River Road Improvements. <laughs> and um, those, uh, those improvements are underway. We are going to have a groundbreaking ceremony for that. FDOT finally got the date settled for that. That's coming up a month from today, April 22nd. We'll keep in the loop on that. And I, and I have to say I'm, I'm very happy to report. I think last time I talked about, I had, I had talked with Congressman Stubbe about getting us a million dollar grant of federal monies to help us with the South River Road improvements. And last week we learned that that had been approved. So that money's gonna come and it'll just keep the momentum going toward that project. Uh, when we were having the meeting um, with FDOT about the plans and the, con the construction crew was there, I just said, look, you're here, you're doing the north section, just keep on going south and get the South River Road done as well. They were happy to do that, they just said it's a matter of money, so we're, we're working on that. Um, and then just a couple of other um, quick things. Surtax 4, this is an incredibly important uh, thing we need to work on and get past. Uh, a couple of the things that are on that surtax uh, list for the county are the sidewalks on Ortiz Boulevard, I've had some constituents here in Northport call and ask about that. I was glad to get that put on the list. And also we'll be updating and, 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 and uh, giving some renewal, new facelift to uh, the Northport Library as a part of that. So that's on the surtax list as well. I know you folks have a lot of things on the surtax. So we all need to work together to make sure that that gets passed by a large majority. So uh, you'll see a lot of uh, public information coming out about that from the county. and. Uh, ask for your help uh, in getting that passed. And then just a quick reminder that um, uh, meeting with your uh, 
city administrator. Um, he has uh, graciously given me space here in City Hall and any commissioner or any constituent, I would be glad to meet here. Don't need to ride to either South County or North County. Uh, we've got space here, so certainly be glad to do that at any time. And with that, I, uh, I will open up if you have any questions or comments, and just again, glad to be with you this evening. Thank you, sir. And just for the record, we got the email today about the uh, ribbon cutting for River Road. So yes. I've put it already on my calendar That's and look great. forward to that. So uh, Commissioner Luke. Thank you, sir. I have two questions. What are your office hours here at City Hall to start with? Uh, you know, uh, I will meet at any convenient time. Um, oh, it's not so, scheduled times. It's so scheduling to make it productive, something. I would then... love to have two or three meetings if I'm here, but um, I will meet at inconvenient time. And I don't, I don't think, I can't recall a time where anyone has asked to meet me. I haven't uh, accommodated that schedule. Okay, so, so it's just open. Yes. And then you got the million dollar grant Yes. Uh, for that. How long do you have for it to be spent? I mean, usually the grants have a time frame. It's an so, earmark, so I don't believe this actually had a time frame to it. Uh, I'll check on that for you, but... Um, We've already got plans for how to how to spend it in terms of getting some design work done. So uh, it will be spent very quickly. Okay. And you know we're looking at a uh, multi-million dollar project, so we're also vigorously looking for other funding sources to to move the project forward. We've got some some good conversations. Well, stating that. that the design, I mean, that will eat that up. I'm sure. Very quickly. So thank you for your report, sir. Thank you. Good to be here, Commissioner White. Yes. Good to see you. You too. Um, I just had a question. There was something in the paper reported about nine hundred ninety thousand dollars that was, um, I think it was state funding money that was coming to the Legacy Trail, and it said in Northport. Don't know if that was an error on the newspaper's part, but do you know anything about? No, what but that I'll, was I'll check on that. It's not something that uh, crossed my radar, so I'll, I will follow up on that. Okay. Get back with you right away on that. All right, because when I looked that up, it was actually something that that same amount of money was going towards Tuttle, that there's going to be a pedestrian bridge over Tuttle. Okay. So Maybe like that I said, I don't know if that was an error reporting that it's coming to, to Northport or not. I'll, I'll find out. Okay, great. Thank you. That's Thank it. You. Uh, Commissioner McDowell. I don't have any questions. I uh, just wanted to say thank you again for coming down here each quarter and addressing your constituents here in Northport. I'm glad to see that you have a little bit of space here by appointment only, which is understandable. And I uh, just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Good to be with you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh. I, I do have, I had written down South County ribbon cut on May 4th. What was that? May 4th? That's the new, that's the new county courthouse. It's opening up the in our elders. Beautiful right. facility. It's going to be very beneficial to South County. Oh, of course. And do you know the time, sir? I think it's 1030, but uh, I'll confirm that with you. All right. Thank you, sir. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, City Clerk, is there any online public comment for this item? Fair enough. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to public hearings, petition CCPLF-21-348. Um, this is a quasi-judicial hearing. Uh, City Clerk, can you read the petition and swear in those wanting to provide testimony? Petition number PLF-21-348, Welland Park Golf and Country Club, Phase 1A, Final Plat. Can everyone wishing to provide testimony please stand and raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to provide is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge to help you guide? Thank you. Okay. Going for ex parte communications, Commiss Commissioner McDowell. Uh, yes, Mayor. Um, the only ex parte I did forward to the city clerk is the request I had for the Welland Park overall map with boundaries. Okay. Uh, Commissioner White? Nothing. I had nothing, Vice Mayor. Um, I did discuss this item very briefly with staff during my agenda review. And Commissioner Luke. Nothing, sir. Thank you. 
City Clerk, um, are there any aggrieved parties? There are not. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, presentation by applicant. You have 20 minutes. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, for the record, my name is Ty Grimo with Kimley Horn and Associates, and I have been sworn. Thank you. Uh, I'm here representing uh, the applicant for this particular application. Uh, the applicant is Lennar Holmes. Uh, the application is for uh, the subdivision plat of the Welland Park Golf and Country Club Phase 1A project. It is located within Village J of Welland Park. The subdivision plat uh, encompasses approximately 610 acres, and we are subdividing it, proposing to subdividing the land into 135 single family lots, uh, as well as associated tracks for uh, infrastructure development of roads, utilities, uh, stormwater, uh, conservation areas, and a future golf course, uh, several uh, golf course tracks. And then also um, the majority of the property will be left in a future development tract for uh, subsequent phases of the, of the project. Uh, this, this one is only for 135 lots. The overall development is anticipated to be somewhere in the realm of 1,400 units um, alongside the golf course and all the associated stormwater and conservation areas. So uh, we're here to answer any questions, but that, um, that, that concludes my presentation. <laughs> um, staff, you have 20 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sam Hudson from uh, the Neighborhood Development Services Planning and Zoning Division, uh, and I have been sworn. Um, I haven't had the pleasure of presenting to the mission before, so I just wanted to introduce myself and uh, say hello. So I am here presenting petition PLF 21348, a plat named Welland Park Golf and Country Club Phase 1A. It is within Village J. The total site contains approximately 610.7 acres. Uh, the site is south of Minnesota Beach Road, west of the West Villages Parkway, and east of Prado Boulevard. It contains most of the acreage within Village J and the, uh, the south border is the city limits. Uh, city staff has reviewed and approved the subdivision and infrastructure plans for this associated with this project. INF 20-19 and SCP 20-20. Uh, the plat adds 135 single family lots and the associated future development golf course, roadway, storm water, and utility tracks and easements. The plat has been reviewed and approved by the city surveyor for compliance with Florida statute 177 part one. Staff recommends the city commission uh, recommend or approve uh, PLF 21-348. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, rebuttal by applicant. Good one. Rebuttal by staff. No rebuttal. Um, city clerk, do we have any public comment on this item? We do not. Thank you. Okay, commission questions. Uh, Commissioner McDowell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just have two of them, uh, and this would be for the applicant. Did you say that this Village J is going to have 1,400 units? That is the uh, expected yield, correct, um, as of today. I believe the, in, the original Village J and the VDPP is entitled for somewhere in the realm of 1,700 units. This is a, it'll be a combination of condominium and single family detached product. So there will be some multifamily buildings that have you know, 16 units to a building, 30 units to a building. So we're approving phase 1A. We're not approving the entire plat for Village J? Or is it one in the same? Currently, with this application, you're subdividing the land into a variety of future development tracks, stormwater tracks, um, conservation area tracks, and then 135 single family detached lots. The, the future applications will subdivide those future development tracks uh, under separate applications, under separate um, flat applications. So this particular one is just subdividing 135 units and then the rest of the property into future development tracks, which would come under future applications. Okay. 
I'm not seeing individual plats here. All I'm seeing is one large, humongous plat. I'm not seeing individual ones. That's because those future phases have not been developed, have okay. not been designed yet. Okay, thank yep. you. No problem. <laughs> um, and this, I think, is for staff. I had requested a summary of what PZAB decided. There's nothing in the backup material. I have not received that information about PZAB's recommendation. <coughs> All right, yeah, my apologies. Um, we'll make sure that you receive that in the future. Uh, at the same time, I can tell you I was there, got to do the same presentation, and they did recommend that City Commission approve this plat, the PLF 21-348. The motion was made, seconded, and uh, passed unanimously. Thank you. No problem. Is that it, Commissioner? That's it, thank you. No other questions? Closing argument, staff? No closing argument? Yes, sir. <laughs> Applicant, we have no, no closing, closing argument. Okay, I'm going to close this public hearing and request a motion. I'll make a motion, Mayor. Go ahead. I move to approve petition number PLF 21-348 as presented and find that based on competent substantial evidence, the Welland Park Golf and Country Club Phase 1A final plat complies with the Unified Land Development Code and Florida <coughs> Statutes Chapter 177. Second. I have a motion on the floor by Vice Mayor Langdon to approve petition number PLF 21-348 as presented and to find that based on the competent substantial evidence, the Welland Park Golf and Country Club Phase 1A final plat complies with the Unified Land Development Code and the Florida Statutes Chapter 177. And that was seconded by Commissioner Luke. Anything to that, ladies? No, sir. Please vote. And that passes five to zero. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, on to CCPLF 21-370. Again, this is a quasi-judicial hearing. City Clerk, can you read the petition title and swear in those wishing to provide testimony? PLF 21-370, Antigua at Willem Park, Village E, Track 9, Residential Subdivision, Final Plat. Can everyone wishing to provide testimony please stand and raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to provide is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge to so help you God? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Commissioner McDowell, any ex parte communications? Uh, yes, sir. It's the same as the last one. It's the same map. I did forward the request to the city clerk requesting the um, map with the boundaries. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Commissioner White? Nothing. I had nothing myself. Vice Mayor? None. Thank you. And Commissioner Luke? Nothing, sir. Thank you. Uh, city clerk, any uh, agreed parties? There is not. Thank you. And we will go on to presentations by applicants. Sir, you have 20 minutes. I bet you I do it faster. <laughs> I hope so. No. John Wazinski, Senior Vice President, Welland Park, LLP. I have, and I have been sworn. This is the subdivision or resubdivision of Track 9 in Village E. If you remember, Village E is basically about 400 acres south of 41 north of Playmore and east of uh, the college, and west of the River Road. We subdivided that subdivision last uh, year as we incurred the, uh, secured the infrastructure permit, and we've been out there developing since. They, that village has seven commercial tracks. All of those commercial tracks are under contract, and we're working on it today, as well as the extension of Merlot and Mezzo Roads, which will connect Playmore up to 41 as well, and the extension of Playmore from where it currently ends at Merlot to our east property line. This track, number nine, is being subdivided for 177 single family lots. It's consistent with the uh, infrastructure permit we received, and we are currently developing this for, uh, like I said, 177 single family homes and we'll deliver this to buyers uh, towards the end of the year. Thank you. Sam, you have 20 minutes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sam Hudson. 
from uh, planning and zoning within neighborhood development services, and I have been sworn. I am here presenting uh, petition number PLF 21-370 Antigua at Welland Park. It is within Village E. The total site contains approximately 75.79 acres. Uh, the site extends west to Merlot Avenue, south to Playmore Road, and the site is located somewhat south of Whip, uh, River Road and south of US 41 South Tamiami Trail. Um, uh, city staff reviewed and approved the infrastructure and subdivision plans for this Village E single family subdivision. Uh, this project is platting Antigua at Welland Park adding 177 single family lots and the associated roadway, stormwater, and utility tracks and easements. Um, the plat has been reviewed and approved by the city surveyor for compliance with Florida statute 177 part one and staff recommends uh, the city commission approve uh, PLF 21-370. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Uh, rebuttal by applicant? No, sir. Thank you. Uh, rebuttal by staff? No, sir. Thank you. Um, city clerk, is there any public comment on this item? There is not. Okay. Okay, we're going to go to commission questions. Uh, Commissioner McDowell. We just have two really quick ones, the same as before. Um, there's nothing in the backup materials showing um, PZAB's recommendation to the commission. Um, I did request it, and I, I don't know what that answer is. So if were you at that same meeting? Yep, did the same presentation. Uh, I apologize. I didn't get your request, and I know we'll make sure that you get it in the future. I'm new, so. Uh, but yes, they made a motion. Uh, the motion was seconded, and they passed a recommendation that City Commission approve PLF 21-370. Fantastic. No problem. Um, since this is adding an additional 177 um, single family lots, um, is that within the <coughs> maximums for this village, or where are we with the actual numbers for the village and for Welland Park? Um, as far as the actual numbers, we can definitely look further into that. I know that it was reviewed against those numbers and is within them. Okay. I just don't have the figures off the top of my head. <laughs> okay, so we're not going over what is already been allowed. I just right. thank you very much. Anything else, Commissioner? No, thank you very much. Okay, Commissioner White. Yes, I don't know if I can ask this, but um, I would be curious what the um, what the prices of these homes would would be. What's the range? What what's the market we're looking at? Can I ask that? I don't think that has any matter to this, does it, City Attorney? The, determining the relevance is up to the Commission as a board. Yeah. Uh, but the Commission's role in reviewing a plot is to determine whether or not it meets the regulations okay. of the city. Maybe you can ask after the meeting. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? No. Um, closing okay. arguments. Uh, staff. No, thank you. <laughs> Applicant. The only thing I failed to mention, this is also immediately adjacent and west. Can you state east. your name again, please? Oh, John Lazinski. Thank you. Uh, this parcel is immediately west and south of the new wastewater treatment plant that opened uh, up two years ago. Just to kind of give you a little more specificity. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'm going to close this public hearing and request a motion. I move to approve petition number PLF 21-370 as presented and find that based on competent substantial evidence, the Antigua at Welland Park, which is Village E, Track D, Residential Subdivision, final plat complies with the ULDC in Florida Statutes Chapter 177. I have a motion on the floor. Did you say track E instead of track nine? That's what I heard. I stated village E, track nine, residential subdivision. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that was clear because I heard, I thought I heard two E's in there. So. Well, I said which is village E, track nine, 
track nine, so that probably tripped it up. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Luke to approve petition number PLF 21-370 as presented and find that based on the competent substantial evidence, the Antigua at Welland Park, Village E, Track 9, Residential Subdivision, Final Plat complies with the Unified Land Development Code and the Florida Statutes Chapter 177. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Vice Mayor Langdon. Anything to that, ladies? No, sir. Please vote. And that passes five to zero. Thank you. Moving on to ordinance first reading, ordinance number 2022-05. City Clerk, can you read this ordinance by title only, please? I'll make a motion, Mayor, to have the City Clerk read ordinance number 2022-05 by title only. Second. Cheat sheets changed a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> I have a motion on the floor to direct the City Clerk to read the ordinance by title only by Commissioner McDowell and seconded by Commissioner mm -hmm. Luke. Anything to that, ladies? No, sir. Please vote. And that passed five to zero. So city clerk, would you please now read that by title only? Ordinance number 2022-05, an ordinance of the city of Northport, Florida, amending the code of the city of Northport, Florida, appendix A, city fee structure, section D, building fees, repealing ordinance number 2020-28, providing for severability, providing for conflicts, providing for codification and providing an effective date. Thank you. City manager, this is your item. Yes, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for this item, we are here to discuss the building fees. And during the time of the pandemic, the governor, as well as other local governments, rolled back some of the fees that were in, in, included in our processes as a municipality. So this fee, we are looking to restore it back to its original uh, rate which would include a $700,000 anticipated projected uh, addition to our bottom line. We do have our assistant in DS, Neighborhood Development Services Director, Mr. Derek Applegate here, who is ready for discussion and available to answer any questions. We do not have a presentation. Thank you, sir. Okay, we'll go on to commissioner questions. Commissioner McDowell. I only have one question. Is there a reason we're going to continue this to second reading on May 10th as opposed to the next day meeting, which is April 12th? Is there something that's prohibiting it from being approved on April 12th? City Manager. The 12th. It's stating on our paperwork April 12th. I'm looking at legislative text and it says May 10th. And that's why I'm asking the question. Sure I've got April 12th on my paperwork right. here. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we don't have a problem that we're aware of for April 12th. So we will, we would like it to be, be back for April 12th. Okay, fantastic. I was just going by legislative text. Appreciate the clarification. Um, I don't have any other further questions. Thank you, ma'am. I see no other questions. I'll go for a motion. I'll make a motion, Mayor. Go right ahead. To continue ordinance number 2022-05 to April 12th meeting. Second. I have a motion on the floor by Commissioner McDowell to continue ordinance number 2022-05 to second reading on April 12th, 2022. And that was seconded by Commissioner Luke. Anything to that, ladies? Yes. Yes, Go sir. right ahead, ma'am. I just want to thank you for getting this done so quickly. Uh, I know that you had to work with city attorney and city manager. Um, I was absolutely shocked at the revenue that it's going to bring in for basically a half a year. Wow. Um, I'm glad that we were able to help the businesses overcome Corona and our residents because it applied those fees applied to both. Wow. A big what? number, but we're doing a lot of permits. Yeah, so that's, that's amazing. So thank you very much. Just me. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'd like to speak to it too. I didn't see your name, but go right ahead. <laughs> you got me push my button. No, you there, see my, it, there it is. All right, you go right ahead, ma'am. 
I want to uh, give credit to Commissioner McDowell. She posed a question back a few months ago that started this in motion. And for the full body to agree that, yes, we bit the bullet at that point in time during COVID, but we needed to uh, come back. I mean, coming back from things that we make to reevaluate them is a smart thing to do in whatever business or government you might work in. So appreciate the team uh, putting this work together. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right, I'll take a motion. How about a vote? Or a vote, I'm sorry, please vote. <laughs> Reading the next one already. And that passes five to zero. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right, moving on to general business 22 2307. Um, city manager, this is your item. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this item discussion and possible action regarding events with or without alcohol at the Newport Aquatic Center. The background on this item is that our team and staff uh, explored uh, several options based on commission request, and there is a presentation involved to go over information that was discovered. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioner Stricho, Wisner, Assistant Director of Parks and Recreation. Um, wanted to point out that this is updated. We had originally planned on discussing this on March 8th. However, Commissioner White was unavailable during the time we were going to do the presentation. So it was moved to this meeting. Um, between the time that we had submitted the first presentation to today, we had learned about some changes with um, Sunsplash, which was one of the organizations we were monitoring. So we do have an updated presentation in there. Just wanted to make sure that that's the one you're looking at. Um, but before we dive in, since we have just finished, oh, wow. ah, oh, I know you felt it. Um, since we did just finish spring break, I wanted to highlight some really great numbers from spring break. First, to remind you that we had two really terrible days start out spring break. Yes, we Cold, did. rainy. Mm -hmm. um, so, so even though our spring break should have been ten days, I'm going to call it really eight days. And in eight days, this team did such phenomenal work. We had just about 6,000 people through the doors, which is about 2,000 people more than spring break last year. Um, in that short amount of time, there was $73,000 about worth of revenue that came through, which is $22,000 more than the same time last year. Um, and what's really impressive is right now, we're about $68,000 more than we were last year in total. So really, the engine is moving, the team is working, we're really trying. Um, but going back to what the topic really is at hand. Um, so in October, we received direction to evaluate um, potential for adult-only events at the Aquatic Center with or without alcohol. And there was direction to look at Sunsplash, a neighboring facility that does offer alcohol. We were supposed to bring this back in February. A um, little bit late, we had some technology issues, if you recall. So first, the overview of Sunsplash. This is really interesting because of the fact that throughout this process with the Aquatic Center, we have had a conversation as to whether or not this should be outsourced and contracted. So Sunsplash was <laughs> built in 1992. Um, it's a bigger facility than our facility. It's about 10 acres bigger than our facility. Um, has about the same operating hours of, as our facility, but they're only open seasonally, 109 days per year. Um, so there's not an offering of a portion of the facility for part of the year like we offer for our teams and leagues specifically. Um, they have had difficulty making the margins that they were hoping for. Um, portions of it were contracted previously. That was specifically alcohol sales was contracted out previously. But what we can see here is what happens when you take a facility that's partially privately run to completely privately run. Um, so you can see the numbers jump from $16 for a resident adult to $25. And for a child resident, it went from $13 to $21. So that theoretical, hypothetical family of four that we talk about frequently, the cost to them for residents went from $58 to $92 just to enter the facility. So those are the kind of impacts that we would potentially see um, if the facility was contracted. So Sunsplash, we took a deeper look into how they manage the alcohol sales. 
pretty similar to a lot of facilities. Obviously, you'd have to provide some kind of identification to prove that you were 21 years old. Um, they get a wristband with three detachable tabs. They take those tabs, have to turn in a tab for a drink, and at the three drinks, they're done. Um, alcohol sales did stop an hour before the facility ends or closes for the day. Um, and they do not offer programs outside of standard hours. So um, it's not like it's an event or something that's happening that they're serving alcohol. It's just a standard part of service. When we received this direction, it was right before we were about to launch our community interest survey that we launched annually for Parks and Recreation. So we thought it'd be a great opportunity to receive feedback from patrons within our community to see how they felt about this potential offering. Um, so the first question out of three questions within the survey was, would you be interested in having an adult-only event at the Aquatic Center? Now, in this question, we only asked adult-only. We didn't say um, specific amenities that would be offered. We ended up with about 106 that said yes and pretty evenly split around 86 that weren't sure, maybe no. Um, the people that said yes or not sure only were invited to the next two questions rather than making somebody that said no have to sit through two more questions. Um, so if they were potentially interested in going, how much do they think they'd pay for kind of an adult only exclusive vibe at the pool? The average ended up being $20 per person. And then how likely would you be able to attend an event if one of these amenities were offered? So we gave them a myriad of choices um, the full facility was definitely the winner. They want to be able to explore all options of the facility, maybe without kids around. I could kind of understand that. Um, live music, trivia contests, and then third down the line was beer and wine sales. So it wasn't a driving factor. It fell pretty much mid-range. Um, so part of the direction we received, too, was to collaborate with other departments within the city to make sure we got feedback and considerations for how an event at the Aquatic Center with alcohol would impact their operations. Um, so human resources, uh, representatives from human resources, risk, police, fire, um, and parks and recreation got together. We had a great meeting and went through pros and cons. Some of the things that human resources noted is there are concerns. A lot of our staff are under 21, the vast, vast majority of our staff. Um, and many are actually under 18. We do hire lifeguards at 16. Um, staff typically aren't prepared to handle alcohol. They're not thinking about that. They have not been trained. These are things that can happen, um, but at this point in time, our staff are not trained for this. The job descriptions also do not include handling alcohol or managing sales of alcohol. And there were some concerns that younger staff that have not been around these settings would not understand potentially life-saving issues for um, being inebriated. So there's some learning that would need to happen. Uh, risk was worried, of course, of increased risk of injury or accident with alcohol in or around water. Um, and there's the concern about selling alcohol. You have to make sure that you're very um, good about inventorying it, that you're keeping the minors away from alcohol, that it should be locked. We don't specifically have that area within the facility. Again, um, this could be managed if we brought a contractor in and they handled it separately. Um, Northport Police and Fire Rescue both looked at it. They are things that we can do, having alcohol at the facility. However, the police department would require that we would have five officers and a supervisor on site during this event with an additional cost. And then Northport Fire Rescue mentioned $650 as their additional cost to have the EMT service there during the event. So the approximate cost for just staffing something like this for Parks and Recreation is $2,750. It's just basically our staff cost for five hours, full facility. Um, so the total direct staffing cost for this would be $4,665. $4,665. With that in mind, we do have a proposed event that would um, be after normal operating hours on a Friday night, the full facility open, understanding that we would need to have the fire and police staffing that we had mentioned. Uh, we would be recommending having a contractor do the sale of alcohol. 
Um, that way they would have a secured area. We wouldn't have to worry about the inventory. We wouldn't have staff um, being trained to say to serve or any of those certifications that are required to serve alcohol. Uh, it does help a bit with the management of it. For this to happen and to just break even, we need 234 participants at that $20 per person that had been mentioned in the survey that people might feel comfortable. Now, aside from that, we are always looking for opportunities to increase revenue, as I mentioned with spring break, um, and, mm -hmm. and we keep our eye on that throughout the year. Here's some other things that were already work in the works for us as far as events. These events or programs are not anticipated um, having alcohol involved and would be within standard operating hours, so they wouldn't be an impact to our expenses, but would look to hopefully increase revenue and draw. So our major question to you is, what's the opinion on having an event at the Northport Aquatic Center that includes alcohol sales? Thank you, thank you very much. That was a very in-depth presentation. You showed the pros, the cons, and the what ifs. So I guess it's coming down to commissioners to decide. I know exactly how I feel already, but uh, I'm gonna open up the floor for uh, Commissioner White, you're first. Thank you, um, and thanks for doing all that research and, and the surveys. Um, I had brought up the idea of having like a Friday night under the lights, but um, I don't remember even how that conversation got into the, including the alcohol in there, unless that was just an option that we were exploring. Um, so, uh, you know, that the whole that whole thing is not that important to me, and I could see that it would be very costly. So, I guess my my question is, just having like that uh, Hawaiian thing you just had on there without the alcohol, could that just be offered? Uh, as an adult, after a certain time, maybe, or because we talked about how there's trying to bring in things for young adults to do and, and adults to do. Um, also, there's something going on this weekend at you know, Benderson, um, you know, the, um, the rowing facility. They're having this big festival up there, uh, Hometown Fest. And I just just think that, you know, we need to have things like that here. And if we had something on Friday nights. Well, and I think that general, discussion as events, that's stuff that can be put on throughout the year. The main portion of this discussion is, do we want alcohol okay. at those events? All right, so it'll be there. Because they can put on any event they want throughout the year and give us instructions on how they want to do it. Do we want alcohol or do we not want alcohol is the main concern on this. Okay, but just to clarify, what time does the pool close typically? Um, throughout the year, it's 10 to 5. However, right. during summer, um, it stays open till 7 p.m. Right. on Fridays and Saturdays. Okay, so I, I, I know I was initially looking for just to extend that time later. So that's a different discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Right. So okay. your only question. That's it. Okay. Uh, Commissioner McDowell, you're next. So I think I know how I'm, I'm leaning towards with the alcohol. Um, I've heard a lot of citizens say that this is something that they would like to have at the Aquatic Center. However, they don't have the full picture to say, yes, we want this because of the cost and the liability and the risk. My biggest concern is the lifeguards. They're underage. And they're under the age of 18 even. They're not even adults. And would we, if we were to consider doing the alcohol, would the lifeguards, our lifeguards, be the ones at the event? Or would the vendor bring in their own lifeguards who are over 18, over 21? No, um, based upon our emergency action plan, we would need to have our staff there, also um, based upon our risk environment. And I now know exactly how I'm voting on this, and if this was comment time, I would love to jump in on that, but it's not. Uh, second question I have, the presentation that you gave that shows the difference between city-run program and Cape Coral's contracted program, that's not in the current backup. Can we switch it out with the new information 
that you just shared with us, can we switch it out and put the correct information in there? So that way then it's available for everybody who says, why don't we subcontract the pool? And then they can say, well, the prices are gonna go up. <laughs> it's my understanding that it is in the backup as an updated presentation. So there are two presentations in there. Because this was moved from the 3-8 meeting, we couldn't change anything from that published 3-8 meeting. Um, but this was added as an updated um, attachment. I know I saw it. On it oh, I see it. Now. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. So it is out there. The rest of the list. I apologize. No Thank problem. you. I'm glad it's in there. Thank you very much. Uh, that's all the questions. But boy, I do have plenty of comments. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Vice Mayor Langdon. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I do have a, just a couple of questions. What was your survey methodology, and what did the demographics of the respondents look like? We do have a, um, a survey recap that we've completed, and those are great questions. This was a survey of convenience. It was just sent to um, basically whoever would take the survey, but we did advertise it many different ways. It wasn't that we just advertised it at the pool with pool users. Um, it went through emails, e-notification, press releases. Um, I don't have my list in front of me. We sent it to um, past members, current members of the facilities. We had it at many events. The Parks and Rec Advisory Board was um, asked to please put this out and, and share it. It was on flyers. Um, we had it on the marquee sign. We really tried to get it out to many people. Surveys don't tend to get too, too many responses. We had just under 300 responses, and we did a comparison between, um, between the previous year and this year, and the demographics are very interesting. They are completely opposite of one another, um, but I can provide that information. Yeah, because if, you know, 80% of the respondents were over 60, versus in their 20s and 30s, you might get a very different picture in terms of what they're looking for. So um, in my mind, the demographics are really important in terms of assessing interest in you know, evening events with alcohol. The demographics for the survey, the recap, is on um, the city's webpage on, our, on the Parks and Rec page. Oh, it would have been nice to have it was, here. Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, on one final question. Um, I saw that we would need five police officers and one supervisor at the event. That's based on an anticipated attendance of how many? That was based on, well, partially on the size. I don't think um, Officer Miranda's here. El Jefe is, though. Uh, Garrison, Chief of Police. I was not part of those discussions. However, it would be based on the total number. It's it's a fluctuating, depends on what type of event it is, uh, demographics, and uh, um, that's how we would determine how many officers. officers. Um, refresh my memory. What's the maximum um, number of people we can service at the Aquatic Center at any one time? We can have up to 1,200. 1,200. Okay, thank you. That's it for me. Thank you, Commissioner Luke. Uh, I hit the button just to give feedback. I don't really have a question. I think staff has done an excellent job uh, getting everything and bringing it back. And I am for events as much as possible. That's programming, but I am not for alcohol being at the events. Thank you. Okay, so you started us off with comments, so. I sure uh, did. Yes, thank you, ma'am. I will go second. Yes, with with all the, the liabilities and the cost factors and everything, we're, we're looking at a very small aquatic park, family orientated. This is not Adventure Island. This is not Disneyland. This is for afternoons and weekends having a good time. I don't feel that there's any need to have alcohol on that property at all, especially with the liability, slip and falls, anything can happen. You may limit it to three beers, but 
people get around things and they may have their wife come that doesn't drink and now the gentleman's having six beers and so on and so forth. It's very hard to regulate that, so why start it and then have to stop it? I, I think y'all are doing a fantastic job with the way it is. The numbers have been increasing coming up. I, I don't think this is a very big detriment to the costs going forward on keeping you know, everything alive and, and getting our monies back from this from the water park. So I think more events, more fun events, that may be the answer on going ahead. Like a like Commissioner White said, a Friday night under the lights, we do it once a year and we keep it open till eleven o'clock at night for school age kids that are off for the summer. Something like that. You know, that's better researching on my part. I'm not in favor of the alcohol at the park, so uh, Vice Mayor Lang. Um, Yes, thank you for the presentation. You did a very thorough analysis, and I am convinced that it would be a mistake to have Parks and Rec manage an event with alcohol, so uh, I'm a no. Commissioner McDowell. <clears throat> so besides everything that my fellow commissioners have said, as far as the risk and um, the workarounds of the limit of three drinks per person. My other biggest concern is you have a 16 year old that's a lifeguard and you pointed out, may not be able to tell the difference between somebody drowning and somebody being a jerk that's drunk. They would have to live with that forever. And to me, that is a price tag. I am not willing to put on their shoulders that they will carry for the rest of their life. I am absolutely against it if the Vendor was bringing in his lifeguards that are adults, that are better equipped, more, more mature, that can recognize that kind of thing, Abs then that's a different subject. But these are 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds, may not have ever been around anybody that drank, let alone in that kind of setting. That, that would be a horrible thing for them to have to live with. Um, so I am absolutely a hard no on this. I am very grateful for all of the information because this, like I said, is something that the citizens were wanting, but this is the rest of the story. And I am grateful for the rest of the story. Um, I would look forward to seeing a blurb on your Facebook page promoting how successful spring break was. I'm sure you're already working on it. I know you're already working on it. I'm just saying I'm looking forward to seeing that and sharing that with the community. Um, so as far as the other little um, events that you might be wanting to do, I don't know if you need commission input on that, um, but I think the subject right now is, is focusing on the alcohol. So if you need commission input on the other um, ideas that you have here, I would be more than happy to say, yes, I think they're good ideas and we'll bring in additional revenues, additional users at different times that the park is already open. Love the idea of the little kids using the splash pad only, but we have to make sure it's very well taped off, marked off, quarantined, whatever you want to call it. So those little ones that know how to finagle their way around everything when they want to try something <coughs> are fully protected. So thank you very much for all of this information. Commissioner White. Yes, uh, very <coughs> thorough and uh, I, I just was never in favor of the alcohol. Alcohol in pools just kind of scare me, okay? So, but it was great, I guess, that we had the information put out there. Um, but just, you know, to, to back to my original, um, what I wanted to, to see more of is, is having that, that facility open later. Maybe, yes, for, for an adult swim, whatever you want to call it, uh, later, because that's what I was shooting for, something to do. Um, in, in North Porch, and, and again, would there be a, a consideration to have, you know, something connected with the Aquatic Center? We have property outside of the Aquatic Center, like to have a festival, and then the, the pool would be part of that, too. I mean, just to think about, about that. Um, if that's another discussion, great, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, just said with or without alcohol, is the, is the item, so I thought we would be talking about just the possibility of having to be open later 
on Friday nights or some night during the week than, than what it is. Well, and, and staff has gotten all of our comments up okay. here. Yes. You know, they're well aware when they're planning an event, okay. now they know that they have support from the commission to where they can extend hours or, you okay. know, go forward and stuff. And then they could bring us right. back and we okay. can talk about that individual event and say, oh, yeah, you know, whatever. That's down the road. Today is alcohol. Okay. Let them research. It's their job. Okay. Let them research. Come back with, they may come back with four events going. This is what we'd like to do each month. Okay, I'm just going by what it says, with or without alcohol. So that's why I thought we were also going to be talking about things without mm -hmm. alcohol. So just to throw, you. yeah, just yeah. to throw it's that. In here too. Yeah. Well, just to throw and that. if I may. About, are we going to use alcohol or not? If I may, during the budget creation process that we're going through now, we are looking at right. um, different events and opportunities that we'll be trying to incorporate in the upcoming year. And also, um, Commissioner McDowell, I had told our outreach engagement coordinator not to post anything about spring break until after I told you guys because I didn't <laughs> want her to steal my thunder. So she's already been creating it. I don't blame you there. <laughs> Okay, I just thought it would be great to to have something in connection with that, like that lazy river. I know that Parks and Rec, you have concerts every now and then at the City Center Green. If you were to have them in the facility, in the vicinity of the pool, I, I just thought you know adults would enjoy floating around in that while the music was playing too. I mean, just to have something different to offer to different demographics in, in the city too. So I, I look forward to see what Jeff coming back for your next next year thank you did thank you, you want to go again ma'am i just wanted to say do you want to give direction for them to prepare maybe three or four ideas for budget well i would that like to have I, I would like to have a motion first to where we can decide on the with or without alcohol so we can i'll, I'll make the motion if i have to or here i'll pass the gavel okay I'd like to make a motion to continue our events at the, the Aquatic Center without introducing alcohol into the facility. Second. Uh, let's vote. No. Well, well, I have to repeat. Yes. yes. So we have a motion to continue our events um, at the Aquatic Center without alcohol. Let's vote. Close enough. <laughs> That motion passes five to zero. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Now, if you would like, we've got that out of the way. So if we want to give them direction to come back with three or four different options throughout budget, I don't, I think they're planning on do doing anyway. that. I don't think it needs to be <laughs> right. a motion right. or a consensus. So I, I, I await budget time, and, and I think you guys are very well adapted to come back with something fun. So Way more creative than we are, so. <laughs> we will work on it. <laughs> Absolutely. I just thought maybe we would want to give them that direction so that they know to be prepared come budget time. That's all. But if, yeah. if they're going to be doing it anyways, I am excited as ever to see what you guys come back with. It's so. their job. And you've already got some of our suggestions anyways on what we're leaning towards, you know, music, later nights, you know, just later. relaxing, you know, basically. So we leave it in your good hands. So thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. All right, moving on. City Clerk, do we have any online public comment? We do not. Do we have any more inline public comment? We do not. All righty then. Commissioner Communications, Commissioner McDowell, do you have anything? Um, I don't have very much. The only thing I want to do is mention yesterday's community education about the tree ordinance. I attended both of the um, educational um, seminars that was held by staff, and I want to give city manager and our staff huge props. They were extremely informative, answered all of the questions. Some of the concerns that we heard from our public commenter earlier today were, was addressed at yesterday's meetings. And I think that's why staff is already prepared to address what he was talking about. Um, it, it was really, really good. And I, I thank city manager and our staff for being so prepared and doing such a great job 
um, getting that very cumbersome, complex code out to the users of that code. So thank you very much. That's really all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner White. Yes, uh, again, kudos for that presentation. I went last night to the tree ordinance and I was really, really impressed. Um, so impressed that I, I gave out a pie. Yeah, I had to, I had to. All right, they did, they did such a good job. <laughs> did they get to at least share it? Uh, that was up to them. Oh, I, I actually said share it is optional, okay, if they wanted to share it, but they, they were just spot on. They, they made it, they simplified it, and it was just so easy to digest. Um, you know, I looked at it as somebody who had You're nothing still talking about, about the pie, aren't you? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> easy to digest. You can't get that off your mind, can you? <laughs> so, yes, thank you for that. Um, the Music Fest, because we haven't talked for a while what we did. The Music Fest was a couple weekends ago <laughs> at the American Legion, and that was a wonderful uh, event. Um, I appreciate the uh, When All Else Fails for, for putting that on, and these are some of the things we're talking about, too, is, is joining with uh, the nonprofits out there and other groups to bring great things into Northport. Um, I also have been in um, conversation <coughs> with um, Assistant City Manager Yarborough about getting, contacting the county about getting a bike repair station at the Shannon Stop Library. And I understand that's supposed to be happening somewhere around that library because somebody had approached me and said that all the other libraries had one except Northport. Yes, so uh, that should be coming soon there, I'm hoping. Um, the Great American Cleanup is this Saturday, and um, I am encouraging people where I live to go out and pick up litter on our streets. It's something that I have taken on myself for the past 30-something years, um, and that and it, along with being the tree lady and the pie lady, there are kids who call me the trash lady, okay? So... <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm looking for other people to take on that job. So I'm hoping um, I get some, some cooperation. But I, I love to see that in our entire city, that people just take some pride and ownership where they live, that uh, to, to, again, depend on city to do everything. And the city manager has stated this also, that you, you can't really depend on, or we shouldn't depend on, um, a city government to do everything uh, for us, that just going out and picking up that can that's in front of your house would be a really big, big help. Um, and also Empire Bagels. I know they've been in, in town now for a few weeks, but I don't think we had a chance to welcome them. I'm so excited to have bagels in Northport. Um, I went to the Northport Concert Band uh, concert Sunday, and... Um, Commissioner Luke, yeah, I was going to say, how do you say her name? Mon. What, what is it? Actually, it's Eman. Eman. Uh, or some people pronounce it Eman, but it is Eman, e so it rhymes okay. with Diane. Oh, oh, okay, thank you. But she, she sang, and that was really, really good. Um, I enjoyed that. I think uh, we were all at the PAC 257 uh, Derby, the... Mm -hmm. the um, what is that called again? Pinewood. Pinewood Derby. Derby. Uh, I don't think we talked about that since then. And um, well, we have. You you were missing that. That's, right. You were right. That's why I have such a big gap. Thank right. you we, for. Well, no, we where we was did I? that <laughs> at, our, at, at our last communication. You, you just happened to be <laughs> absent. <laughs> so no, you're good. Keep... That's a load off my mind because I'm thinking, <laughs> wait a minute, how come I can't remember that? Because I wasn't here. Yeah, okay. no. I mean, carry on. <laughs> this is all stuff that you did, but that's why you're the only one doing it now. That's right. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. Okay. You're really not slim. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's not old age. It's yeah. all right. I, okay. And then I was on Real Talk Radio it's yesterday. It's not even 7.30. It's not even 7.30. Yeah. I know, but I am ready. I am ready. But we did have four meetings today, so. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's it. That's it for me. So thank you for, for uh, indulging in, in me. You are so very welcome. Okay. <laughs> um, the only thing that I had was lately was the business I saw with expo with uh, the chamber I attended that and that was a very good turnout that was the day of all the havoc that we had out mm -hmm. here in uh, city hall and all the parking and the roadways so and I know I know the city manager will remember that day very well <laughs> 
as not only was he. I don't think we're going to let him forget for next year. He was patrol, security. I mean, he did it all out there with with help from his friends, because I know Commissioner Luke was out there, and some other people he didn't even know was out there going, what are you doing? I'm just helping. So thank you very much, sir. You did take control, and, and everything worked out good. Because the rains finally came and <laughs> calmed, calmed, calmed everything down. <laughs> Vice Mayor Langdon. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I had the privilege of participating in a meet and greet with city manager and staff at the Shannon Staub Library. We had about 30 folks there. It went very well. Folks were very engaged. Um, a lot of good questions and input. Uh, it was a great time, and I guess we're going to have an opportunity to do it again at Cypress Falls next week. So I'm really looking forward to, or in two weeks, I'm really looking forward to that. I had lunch with David Hutchinson, who is the executive director of the Merit, um, Metropolitan Planning Organization. And my intention for that meeting was to talk with him about how I might better serve the residents of Northport in that capacity. Um, when you're talking about traffic um, and FDOT, the attention tends to be north because there are the public transportation needs are much greater, the traffic is much greater. So be, I guess it's a good news that the city of Northport is not a hot mess yet, so <laughs> we're not getting a whole lot of attention, but he we did have an interesting conversation about how we might, we being the city, might plan some things so that we would attract more attention. So I'll be having a conversation, follow-up conversations with Anthony Friedman, who is our engineering um, person who participates in the MPO and with city manager and see if we can't um, do some longer range planning with our roads so that we might attract more funding um, and not have to take the cost of road improvements on our own. Question, comment? I was just gonna say, it sounds so interesting. Is it possible that Mr. Hutchinson would be willing to come and give a presentation so that we could all learn? I'm just well, throwing it out. The, the meetings are open to the public, you couldn't vote, but if you want to, to attend those meetings, they're also broadcast. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So if you want to watch those meetings, you can certainly do that. Um, <laughs> Thank you for that. You're welcome. The third item, um, the infamous business expo. I was also an eyewitness to all of those uh, festivities and it was interesting seeing city manager and commissioner Luke in their roles as traffic cops. Um, I saw a whole new side of them. Um, it was a lot of fun. And yes, the rains did finally come and wash everything away. So, but it was well attended event. Um, Tom and I hit both events. We got rid of some big jugs of paint. And uh, then I went to the business expo and it was really very interesting. I connected with some new people. So that's it for me. Commissioner Luke. Yes, I direct traffic. <laughs> we have to get you a vest. Uh, actually, I enjoy parking cars and whistling traffic around. So, um, I I attended over at the Performing Arts Center what I thought was going to be Woodland Middle School doing a spring concert. It ended up being a one of their competitions. Them and Murdoch Middle School out of Port Charlotte. We're prepping for competition. Those kids were outstanding. The musical ability, it was as though you were listening to adults playing. It was just incredible. So I wish Woodland the best in their competition, and I hope that we can be able to congratulate some winners here in a public meeting. Uh, I was, popped in briefly to Leadership Northport they went over to Little Salt Spring, and I was able to witness the city manager walking the plank. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know that there's a floating dock out 
all the little salt springs. I watched them all walking out. They look like ducks. <laughs> you never know what you're going to be doing. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I was going to take a picture of everybody out there on that dock, their whole class. And I turn around, he's walking back, and he says, I'm saving myself. <laughs> It, it was hilarious. It was dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because Steve Cossey said everything was dangerous. The Business Expo, yes, I did attend that and the Hazard Waste, and we've talked enough about the cluster of traffic, but I know that's never going to happen next year or any time after that. I went to National League of City at D.C., and if I... There's just no way I've got the time to articulate how magical that time was for me. Just really appreciative of uh, everything. Was able to take a tour. I invited the commissioners from the city of Sarasota. They attended with me. Their jaws were basically on the ground. They were so grateful to be able to witness it. So we ended up with seven people being toured, appreciate uh, Deputy Chief making the connection with Captain uh, Patton, but it was just outstanding. The lineup of speakers, from the president to ambassadors to um, secretaries, just incredible, uh, the lineup of speakers. I'll probably never encounter an experience like that again. Had some EDC meetings, um, one where I actually sat in the position for the representing the city. I attended two St. Patty kind of events. One was the Young Professionals for the Chamber and then the Net at Noon for the Chamber. And of course, they had a couple of ribbon cuttings. City Yard Sale. My fellow commissioners reaped some of that yeah. today. The, <laughs> I attended the Van Gogh um, presentation up at the UTC. If you enjoy art and experiences like that, you got to go. It's tremendous. Also went with uh, Craig from the Northport Sun to interview uh, Lydia, a Ukrainian woman who actually was able to get out of Ukraine and get back home here to Northport that when you're hearing those stories, it just sends chills down your back. But the love that she had for her neighbors and her city coming back home, uh, she went numb while she was over there in all of the turmoil. The emotion just kind of numbed her out. But when she got back and was able to see her friend and be at home, she broke and the emotion just poured. The last thing is House Bill 7055 passed. That's the ransomware one, where they are not going to allow cities to pay for Didn't ransom. Did you take that out? Nope. It passed. So what I'm asking, because it's gone to the governor, it's up to the governor to sign it, and they might have good intention of thinking, well, if they, the hackers know they can get paid by governments, they'll just hack hack it. But if we say, no, you can't hack it, uh, or you can't pay for the hack, maybe it would you know, slow it down some. But Texas has a similar law, but they've got a um, release valve. And they let you take your concern to the governor or somebody in a position such as the governor because if somebody hacks your utilities and then doesn't talk to you for a week and you got no water, no sewer, no nothing, going to thousands and thousands of people, <coughs> people can't live like that. So I would encourage anybody that's listening, my fellow commissioners, to write the governor. Uh, encourage not to sign this, but make it go back. But if he does end up signing it, that needs to be a pitch for next year to get that clause put in. Commissioner McDowell? Yeah, last year we did a we did a push. We sent a letter to the governor 
asking them not to sign a bill. I, I don't remember exactly which bill it was. Um, I don't know if you want to, I don't know if we can give direction to, to send a letter to the governor for something like that, or if we need an agenda item. But boy, oh boy, we, we really need to put a push for something like that so that the governor doesn't sign it. And if we are going to do that, we probably need to do the same thing for the other bill that passed, which is sitting on his desk, is the um, business 15%. Um, that I wasn't prepared to talk about it. So uh, the, the other bill that allows a business to sue the city for lost revenues, um, because that is going to be extremely detrimental to our city if we were to ever get sued for that. So I don't mind getting a consensus for letters to be sent and having the mayor sign. I, I think it needs to, can we bring this to the next meeting as an agenda item? This is not on the agenda. It's not supposed to be discussed. So, I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from, but if we can get it on like when's our, our next meeting, April 12th, is that, was that our next meeting or do we have one prior to April that? 7th. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, April 12th is the next, I think, evening meeting. The next meeting itself. April 7th is our next meeting unless we have a workshop. No, yes. April 7th is our next at meeting. 4 mm -hmm. At 4 p.m. Can we have that as an agenda item on that meeting then? Yes. yes and then we can discuss it and get it out. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if because this is a timing issue, this is a time sensitive thing, if we have to have um, an agenda item or if we can give consensus to do it. Because the governor may may automatically sign it because it goes in tranches, and he can those tranches are like a stack of bills, and he can sign them all at once, or he can just let them sit on his desk. He doesn't have to sign it. If he doesn't sign it, it automatically becomes a law. So we don't know if he's going to see the tranche and go, "Ooh, let's sign this one and let this one sit." We don't know that, and if it's a timing issue. And it's really that important. I don't know. Maybe city attorney can advise us if we have to put it on the agenda or if we can do a time-sensitive thing without an agenda item. So it's always best practice to put an item on the agenda because then your public knows that the item is coming up and they can participate in the process either through public comment or attending the meeting or listening to the meeting you know, live or even recorded. So that that is always my my top advice is to is to notice it on the agenda. Now, if you do find that it is time sensitive, the Florida law gives you some flexibility, and if there's some you know reasonable foreseeability that it's the type of thing that you all would discuss, then you know it does not have to be on the agenda per se. Right. So I, I would say you know if you are inclined to talk about it now in commissioner reports where it's not been you know noticed for the public um, it would be up to you all to determine whether you found it to be so time sensitive or emergent that it could not wait and be fully noticed i don't mind waiting for it to come on the agenda if it can come on the seventh but i'm going to write the governor anyhow <laughs> unless we unless we have a special meeting that gets called to address the tree code issues we can put it on that meeting if that's what the city attorney's, I mean, the city manager is going to do. Oh well, yeah, we can, we can always play on that by ear, but as it is right now, the next meeting is April 7th. Was that the correct date, sir? And, and, and we'll just go forward with that. Um, if any of the commissioners wish to send their own replies to the governor as a citizen, they can more, they can do that. As a board, we will, we will discuss it and decide that on that date is that all you had ma'am okay city manager one thing you did learn with hanging out with commissioner luke is always bring your swimmies so <laughs> do you have anything for your report sir uh just one thing i will let you all know mr mayor is that we have ensured that the solid waste expo will not happen in 2023 on the same date as the business expo as it did this year already taken care of or any other event at City Center? <laughs> well, it will not be at City Center. So oh, it's we, not. We're going to move okay. it. Yes. Right. 
Yeah. Thank you, sir. City Attorney, do you have anything for a report? No, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. City Clerk, no, how about you. you? I do not. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right, it's 742. I adjourn this meeting. Everybody have a great night.